This video is just going to focus on the House of Representatives and some things that change from time to time with how the districts are basically set up. So we talked about the fact that um, each representative from the House of Reps is elected out of a district. These districts can change approximately every 10 years. Uh, if you look at Pennsylvania, for example, the map on the left is from before 2020 and the map on the right is from after 2020. So you'll notice that there are some subtle changes to the size of the districts, the shapes of the districts, um, and also the numbers of the districts. There are 18 districts on the left-hand side, and there are 17 on the right-hand side. So these are how the changes work. Every 10 years in our country, we go through the census process when we try to count up how many people live in each state. It's not an exact science, but we do our best to count up how many people live in each state. We try to figure out over that 10 year time period, the last census is in 2020. So between uh, 2010 and 2020, what states gained in population and what states lost. So because the House of Representatives is frozen at 435, basically we don't add um, numbers to that. What we do instead is we just readjust which state has what part of the 435 every 10 years based on census data. So if a state gains or loses population, we have to basically adjust the number of reps they have. That's called reapportionment. If you look at the chart, right, that's included on the screen, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, Colorado, Oregon, and Montana each gained at least one seat, right? At least one representative, right? Um, because we're giving extra reps to those states and the number's frozen at 435, we have to take an equal amount from states that lost population. California, New York, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Michigan, and West Virginia, all lost districts. So if a state either gains or loses districts, we have to go through the redistricting process. This is when state legislatures basically draw the new districts to reflect the reapportionment changes, right? The old map didn't work for Pennsylvania because it had 18 districts. We just lost a rep because of the 2020 census. So basically we need to redraw the map to reflect the fact that we only have 17 districts now. It's important to note that whenever a uh, political party controls your state legislature, it's the job of the state legislature um, to, uh, to draw the districts, that they basically get the ability to do this. And if that um, party in that state decides to draw the districts in a way that will just benefit their own political party, that's called gerrymandering. Um, it's nicknamed after Elbridge Jerry, who was the governor of Massachusetts in the early 1800s. And he was the first to encourage his political party to draw the districts in a way that would simply benefit his political party. The goal being you're trying to include as many registered voters from your party in a district to give your party an advantage. So um, there are some classically gerrymandered districts. This is Ohio's old fourth district. We kind of laugh at it and say that it looks like a duck. It's just known as the duck. Uh, PA's old 7th district, again, is an example of a gerrymandered district. Um, it's the pink here, right? And you'll notice that it's one continuous shape, which is what it has to be, um, with other districts coming in and out. It's designed like that on purpose to include certain groups and exclude certain groups. This one, by the way, is nicknamed Goofy. This is supposed to be Goofy right here with the floppy ears, kicking Donald Duck. Uh, and then this is probably the most gerrymandered district right now. This is the Illinois 4th District, um, where this whole thing is one district and everybody else in between has another representative. And again, we go through this process every 10 years of adjusting the number of reps that each state has. That's called reapportionment. If your state loses or gains a rep, we have to redraw your congressional districts. That's called redistricting. And if we just draw the district in a way that benefits uh, the political party, that again, it's done by the state legislature, the state redraws the district. Whenever a party controls your state legislature, you could use that process to benefit your own political party. That's called gerrymandering. 